I wanted to revisit this Pix Falcon build. In a previous video, I demonstrated that when I flipped into loiter mode, right after I had everything configured, this thing shot off in the sky. And what I want to do in this video is demonstrate the manual tuning and auto tuning process that I went through to get everything dialed in. Now, I also want to give a special thanks to Leonard Hall. He is the godfather of the auto tuning code. Leonard reached out to me earlier this week and we had about an hour long Skype call where he talked me through a lot of the parameters. He sent me a parameter list and basically his how-to for getting everything dialed in. I'm going to do the best that I can to share what Leonard told me, sort of in a visual format. I'll show you guys the results of each axis tune, and we'll take a look at that mission planner. And Leonard, if I miss anything, please feel free to chime in or reach out, and we'll do a follow-up video. So let's get started. The first thing that you'll want to check, and it doesn't matter how much tuning you do, you're not going to be able to overcome this issue without addressing uh, an IMU problem. In my case, I sent this off to Leonard and he pointed me in the right direction, but you can see there are two IMUs both being plotted here, the X, Y, and Z axis. And if you look at IMU number one, this blue line, you can see these spikes on the Z axis, which likely demonstrate how my 250 shot up in the air. So what we need to do in this case is disable the IMU. Since the Pix Falcon has two IMUs and my first one obviously has a problem, I've gone ahead and disabled it with this INSU's parameter of set to zero. The INSU's two is set to one. And let me share, these are the base parameters that I started with. Leonard was generous enough to put these together and send them to me, so I loaded them onto the Pix Falcon you can see here where that first IMU is disabled. And from that was the basis of me being able to begin tuning and come up with a successful tune. We'll now start with the manual tuning process. I'm going to share Leonard's process that he shared with me and it's worked well. So the first thing that you wanna start with are your rate, pitch and roll, D gains and you wanna hook that up to your channel six. I've done a previous video that sh demonstrates in-air gain tuning, and I'll show you just briefly what that looks like here in a second, but you wanna set this minimum value for your rate pitch and roll D gain to the value that is set there by default. So that's a nice safe minimum. And then maximum, I've found that maybe two or three times the value of your minimum is a good max. You'll want to write those parameters and make sure they're attached to a slider, not a switch, so that you can slowly bring that slider up to where you see oscillation. Once you're done with your D gains, you'll make sure that you save those parameters and then you'll move on to your P gains and you can see these are the values that I came up with. But let me show you quickly what that looks like in the air. Okay, so I'm currently flying in stabilized mode. I have my rate pitch and roll D gain hooked up to channel six, which is this little knob on the right side. And I'm just gonna slowly bring this up until we see oscillation. You can see all sorts of oscillation there and I'll bring it down slowly just to where I feel comfortable give it a little bit of throttle, make sure that the oscillations are still gone, and work back and forth till you find an area that's comfortable with no oscillation. Then I'll land and save those parameters. Now these are the D gains that I came up with doing the in-air gain tuning as well as my P gains. Now, one word of caution, after you do your in-air gain tuning, I don't on my Pix Falcon currently have telemetry hooked up, so I have to cable into Mission Planner, but you wanna make sure that you make note of these, write those parameters, and make sure that it's not still pulling it off your channel six setting. That sometimes happens and may catch you off guard. So once those are done, you have those parameters saved and you feel good about it, make sure you go outside, fly, 
and then you can move on to the auto tuning process. Now I've covered auto tuning in a previous video with my hexacopter and shown how you start off in altitude hold mode and then toggle a separate flight mode into auto tune. But I wanted to share this bit of information that Leonard shared with me. It's very important. It was helpful for me because I had only auto tuned before multiple axes at the same time. And what you can do, especially if you have a smaller build with a smaller battery, you might not be able to tune everything. So in this case, you can see I have this set to four, which means yaw only. And what I've normally been doing is tuning the roll axis, landing, getting those settings saved, then moving on to pitch with a new battery and then to yaw. So I did roll and pitch the other day outside. Unfortunately, it's very windy today. I'll demonstrate yaw only here in the garage just because it's a less aggressive tune and it's easier to keep it around me without crashing into anything. So I'm in altitude hold mode and then what I'll do is I'll trigger the auto tune which is set up for the yaw axis. So there we go. And if it ever gets away from me, I'll just bring it back. And always keep in mind when you land, leave that auto tune switch high disarm your copter and your settings will be saved. But I always recommend hooking up to Mission Planner, checking out your values. Here you can see our yaw gains from auto tuning. It does tune stabilize and rate modes, which is great. And you can see that it actually unlinks your pitch and roll values. So these are the pitch and roll gains from the other day when I auto tuned outside and this is the yaw gain from the video I just showed you here in the garage. Another thing I'd like to share, I've been asked this many times and this is just my personal experience that each axis takes on average about four minutes to tune. Now I think that will probably vary based on your copter size but for my 250 it takes about four minutes. Now that we've done all of this gain tuning, the moment of truth is upon us. I'm going to take it outside and do a loiter test and see how that holds up. Stabilize now I'm flipping to loiter. It's a bit of wind out today, five to ten mile an hour gust, but you can see loitering really well. Lost a little bit of altitude, but now it's coming back up. But so far after all of this tuning, I've been really impressed with the results. Now let me loiter a little bit closer. So now I'm in loiter mode. Just doing a great job of maintaining position. I like it the first of the video when I showed you that this thing just shot off in the sky. And there you have it. I know that was a lot to cover in this video, but I wanted to share that information with you guys. The key really for me was understanding about the IMU problem, being able to disable that, and then going through Leonard's process to manually tune and then auto tune. And just keep in mind, if you get to a place where you're not happy with your gains, you can always tune again. I don't think there's such a thing as too much auto tuning. I'll be sharing the parameter list on Dropbox that Leonard sent me, as well as the full parameter list for this QAV250 with Pix Falcon inside of it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. Thank you, Leonard, for sharing this information with us. And until next time, thanks for watching.